Hello everybody and welcome back to the Slack and Armchair Supporter channel. I'm here with another match preview and it is Liverpool versus Tottenham. This game is coming from Anfield. We're finally at home. It seems like it's been an age since we've been playing at Anfield. But finally back at Anfield. It's going to be this Sunday the game. That is Sunday the 5th of May and it's at half past four kickoff. So as you can see, I will be live um, at about 30 minutes before kickoff. So about four o'clock, hopefully, I'll be kicking off my live stream. My watch along and i look forward to seeing you guys in there tag along get in the chat you know have a bit of fun with me i'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on in the game and um yeah i look forward to seeing you all in there so first off before i get into my match preview if you haven't already please leave a like on the video of course and then also if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button it helps me so much every single person makes a massive difference so let's get into the match preview and i've got my i've got my trusted little notepad out and I've just been looking up Spurs' form. I do apologise for the lateness of the video of this coming out. I know this is it's 25 past 8 on Friday. I wanted to have this video out yesterday. I've just been hectic. Um, and I planned on getting this out a lot earlier. But it's here for years now. And Spurs' form. So, they're fifth in the table. They've played 34, won 18, drawn 6 and lost 10. Now... They've sort of they've sort of really hit a speed bump really uh, recently. Their last five, um, actually, they actually played last night against Chelsea, uh, a two 0 loss at Stamford Bridge. Before that was a three two loss on home turf against bitter rivals Arsenal. Then a four 0 loss um, at St James's Park against Newcastle. Then before that was a three one win against Nottingham Forest, and that was at home. And then before that was a 1-1 draw against West Ham and they were away from home. They're at London Stadium. So three losses, a win and a draw in their last five. Really not great, um, especially pushing for uh, Champions League places. Obviously, um, I think it's actually been confirmed now. I think it's mathematically impossible for them now. I think I, I read that somewhere. I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up um, for the live stream. So... That ship has sailed, unfortunately, I do believe, for Spurs. Um, so not much left to play for. I mean, I suppose that's good for us because our form currently, you know, you wouldn't know what would happen. And maybe they could have caught us if they'd stayed on form. But um, it looks like any time they play any team with a bit of, with a bit of something, they, they just seem to fall apart. I mean, I, I did watch the Arsenal-Spurs game and I felt... Because I, I just felt there was going to be more from Spurs... But there was nothing. They were lucky to get the two goals, really. One of them was a penalty. Um, and then also, if you go back to the head to head between Liverpool, there's only been one this season. We haven't met each other in the Cups. Just in the league, 30th of September. I don't need to rem remind you, Liverpool fans, about it. It's, <clears throat> it's, trust me, it's long stuck in my head. It was a 2 1 win for Spurs against Liverpool at, um, at their home ground. And yeah, just that game filled with poor refereeing decisions. Terrible VAR calls. Diaz's goal being given for offside when it was perfectly onside and VAR confirming it. Um, there was two red cards. Curtis Jones got a red card and Jota got a red card. Jota's was... Curtis Jones, I understood it. Um, I think it was a bit harsh, but I understood why it was given. It, it did look dangerous. Um, just the intent weren't there. But Jota's was absolutely pathetic. It's two yellow cards where he hasn't touched the guy. Um, very, very shady is what I would say. But at the time, I suppose the FA and um, the PGMOL didn't know which London team they were going to be backing because it was only a few games into the season. And um, another thing is that Ange has certainly changed his mind on VAR since then. Um, he had plenty to say about it. Um, was it against Arsenal? I think he came out and his, his, um, his opinion certainly changed anyway. Um, so that's Spurs' uh, Spurs's form, Tottenham's form. Let's get into Liverpool's form. Um, we know, we know, we just know. Um, terrible is what it is. Last time out, that 2-2 draw against West Ham. The only saving grace about this game is we've had eight days worth of rest. Um, I really do hope that the rest has been taken. Um, <clears throat> players come back, getting themselves up to match fitness. You know, the likes of Jota and that uh, by Cetic. Um, I don't think we'll see any of them. You'll see in my um, my lineup prediction. Um, I actually can't remember who I put in the lineup prediction. I did make it 
like two days ago. Um, but we'll go through that together anyway. It'll be a surprise for me as well. So, um, yeah, <laughs> we've just been so poor. Our wheels have really well and truly fallen off. Um, this little um, conflict between Salah and Klopp as well. Obviously, that was going to be picked up by the media. I think it's pathetic. I just need to get on with it. If you watched my shit house of the week series, you'll see that Salah was shit house of the week. There's just no need for it. They're professionals. He's a professional, you know. And at the end of the day, Klopp's the boss. <clears throat> you can have your disagreements, but sort it out um, when the day is done. Um, yeah, form wise, I'm not expecting much. Um, I j I just really don't know how to put it really I, I it's just so unpredictable liverpool at the moment i mean we we weren't expected to do anything this season and then we slowly quietly went about our business we got the wins we got the points we were pulling off late victories we got a bit of luck but we were there we kept ourselves there we kept we put ourselves to the top of the table after the new years and then so we know we've got the capabilities and then all of a sudden bang hit a wall dropped off the whole season's pretty much written off now, other than a Carabao Cup, which at the end of the day is a cup, but it is the Mickey Mouse Cup. I'll call it the Mickey Mouse Cup. Like I, I, I take it, I will take it, but it's it's always a Mickey Mouse Cup. It always will be when we when we win it. When anybody else wins it, it's it's not like the most prestigious cup, but it's silverware nonetheless. <clears throat> so, for my score prediction, like I say, this is hard. But I'm going to go with that. I just, I just I, I, I think Liverpool will get revenge for that horrible game. And if they don't want to fight for at least that revenge, then they're not willing to, they're not going to be willing enough to fight and win a league. I mean, you should be going into this game and thinking, you know, you've got one over on us last time. Let's, batter them let's absolutely batter them and if they're not willing to fight for that then you know well we know the, the title's pretty much gone anyway um but if they've not got that fight in them for this sort of battle they haven't got the fight in them for a title race or for a title running so i'm gonna go with 2-1 i would not be surprised if it's a 1-1 or a 2-2 to be honest with you it's gonna be tight spurs might even come away with a win to be honest with the way we've been playing but i will never put a Liverpool loss on a prediction. So let's get into my lineup. Yeah, let me find it. Um geez, where are we? There we go. Here we are. So okay, yeah, I remember it now. Yeah, I think this is just what I think will happen. I thought I was a bit, you know, fun up top, but I just I don't know. So anyway, between the sticks got to be Allison. He is still an unbelievable keeper. He's just the world's best keeper. He's just got shit in front of him. Um, if they don't perform, then he can't be at his best. Um, he saved us a good few times against West Ham and the game before that with some saves. So, of course, he's in there. Um, Robertson at left back. Trent at right back. Of course, I mean, there's people saying that they're, they're not quite up to it now. Um <sighs> Trent, I think, is always up to it. Since he's come back from his injury, I think he's actually looked one of the most promising players on the pitch. Robertson has had a bit of dip in form. His crosses just seem to be aimless. Um, like his final third output is seems to have dropped a bit. Um, his corners and that set pieces, when he's putting a ball into the box, I, I don't know, he just does not seem to be able to hit a Liverpool head um, these days. So that's a bit disappointing, but that can come and go, you know, the defensive work that he does is far more important. Um, having him in there ahead of the likes of Simicass. The only argument you could make is maybe Gomez in there ahead of him. <clears throat> because Gomez has been a pretty much complete package this season for Liverpool. So, But Robertson, natural left footer, more suited to the left back. So that's why I've got him in there. Van Dijk, Canate. I think Canate will come back in. He's been dropped. And he's had plenty of rest. He's had more than plenty of rest. I'm not sure if maybe he was had a, a little injury or a little sickness or something, or whether he was just playing terrible. Um, so I'm expecting him to come back in this one. Um, it is a big game. It is Spurs at the end of the day. They were challenged for top four. 
you know, at the start of the season, people, you know, first 10 games, I think they were top of the league and they were like, oh, you know, Spurs could go on a title run here. Obviously fell away, but it's still a big team, Tottenham. Then in midfield, I've gone with Endo, um, McAllister and Soboslai. I just, I just think that's what Klopp will play. I really just, Endo, Endo has to be in there because he's the best in that role. McAllister has to be forward because he's our best midfielder. And he's better when he's in that more forward role. He's great. He's great in number six, but he's better slightly forward. And then Sobersly, I mean Sobersly. You could change Sobersly for anybody. You could change him for Jones, Gravenberg. Um, you could put Gakpo in there and then throw Nunes up top. I think out of the three, Sobersly would be the most likely to be dropped. But I, I just think Klopp will put him back in. So that's how I think it'll happen. I, I just think that's what will happen. And then up top, I've done something that I want to see. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we will. Well, we possibly will see this, but a variation of this. Um, I'd like to see Salah through the middle. It's where he's more likely to score goals. The closer he is to the goal, the more likely he's going to score a goal. Diaz on the right-hand side is far better than Diaz on the left-hand side. And Gakpo, coming in from the left, is far better than any other position we've ever played Gakpo in. He just looks like a completely different player when he's over there. So why not let him play over there? Gakpo left, Diaz right, Salah through the middle. That's my lineup. So in full, that is Allison, Robertson, Van Dyke, <coughs> Kanate, Trent, then into midfield, Endo, McAllister, and Soboslai. Up front is going to be Diaz, Gakpo, and Salah through the middle. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any thoughts on that, if you think I've made a massive blunder, let me know that as well. I'm happy to hear it all. Um, thanks again for tuning in, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all in the live stream. As I said, 4 o'clock on Sunday, I'll be live. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in there. If you haven't already, please leave a like on the video and hit that subscribe button of the fucking Reds.